In this video, I'm going to do a review of the Narex Bevel Edge Chisels. Now, these are the ones that are about $60 on Amazon, and this is a great set of chisels. If you just want to skip to the end of what the you know overall review of these is, these are an absolute buy, in my opinion, if you are upgrading from something like a Home Depot chisel set or some other kind of intro set. You know, they come out to about $15 a piece, which is a lot of money for a single tool, but together, it's totally worth it. They are kind of that first step into the premium market. They're not a Two Cherries or a Richter, though I honestly, after using these, could not tell you what someone could possibly do to a chisel to make it worth that much more money. I don't think I'll ever buy another set of chisels that's more expensive. These have blown my mind, filled every need, and I love using them. I chisel way more now that I have this nice set of chisels. I used to shy away when I was using a Home Depot set these have given me so much more confidence because you can sharpen them to a truly razor's edge. Now, the one thing I will say about these chisels is that handle types are going to feel different to different people. So these have a slightly flattened area here. It's still round, but it's a little flattened off to sit in your palm and your fingers. Now, to me, that feels very good. They are balanced well, and they just they feel very good when they're using them. But handles on chisels are a personal taste. Some people even turn their own because of that. So I can't guarantee you, because it's subjective, how these will feel in your personal hands. However, to me, they feel amazing, they're very well balanced, and it, it sits very well in your palm. When you first get this set of chisels, there is kind of a gummy, plasticky substance on the end of them to protect the blades while in shipping. I used mineral spirits to take it off. Uh, any kind of solvent will likely work. However, if you do use the solvent and you start moving up here, uh, it will take this lettering off if you leave it too long. I don't know if that matters to you. Didn't matter to me, but I just noticed that it did take off uh, the lettering up on some of these. Now, I've used these three extensively, but I've never used this one. So this will allow us to go through a good review of one that's never been sharpened and never been used. You can see there's still some gum on there and that the back has not been flattened. We're gonna look at how long it takes to flatten the back of these. With the experience of these other three, it took a reasonable amount of time to flatten the back, some a little more than others. These are $60 chisels. They're not gonna come perfectly flat, though even high-end ones often don't. And if we remember on a chisel, we only have to get the first half inch, three quarters of an inch or so flat. So it doesn't take too much time, especially on these three. This one, we'll see how long it takes. Now these chisels come with a primary bevel already on them. However, when you're using chisels, you need to sharpen to a secondary bevel. So these are not really ready to use out of the box. They will cut something, but it's a noticeable difference when you properly sharpen them. So do not expect to get this set of chisels and be ready to go right out of the box to a level that would meet the standard of what these are capable of. Just be aware of that. If you're trying to get away to get pre-ready-made chisels, these are not them. You do have to do the sharpening. You gotta put in a little work and then they are unbelievable. Now, if we take a look at the back of this one inch, you can see the machining marks along here, and this is how they come out of the box. Now, this is one that I've done the back flattening on, and hopefully you can see my reflection of me standing behind the camera here. You're able to get them that polished if you have the right grits to go through and the right sharpening. There's still some marks left on there, but it's not too bad, and you can see how high the polish is on that. I can see the camera lens right there. I'm hoping you can see here too roughly how flat these came. We have areas here that were clearly concave. As I was sharpening the back, it did not reach this area or this area. And we had some flatness here, here, and then here. Now, of course, the only part that really matters is this front half inch, three quarters of an inch or so. So for all intents and purposes, unless you're a perfectionist, uh, it's not a big deal that the back parts are not uh, as flat and a little concave. Overall, I think they actually come pretty flat, but we're going to now do the flattening of the back half inch or so of the one inch. All right, I'm going to begin the flattening of the back. I'm only going to show a few seconds of this, but I'm going to time it to see how long it takes me to get that first half inch or so flat. So uh, I'll let you know in a second here how long it took. Now, depending upon how much perfection you want to get here, you're going to determine how much of the chisel face you put onto the stone when you're sharpening. If you do the whole thing, that's gonna require you to take down every high spot within there. Uh, if you just do the first half inch, three quarters of an inch, it'll take less time because you only need to get through any higher low spots in this area. 
So that's up to you. I'm starting with a 300 grit stone here and then I'm gonna work my way up. All right, so I finished with the 300 grit. It took a little under 20 minutes. I had to remove quite a lot from up along the edge here. There was definitely a concave spot. You want the at least half inch of this to all look uniform and scratches before you move to the next grit. If you still see areas that aren't the same, keep going. You can see much like the other ones, we've got a concave here and a little bit of a concave back in this area too. Now I didn't attack this far back that hard, but I've got this area good here. So I'm gonna move to 600, take the time now. It'll be better performance later. Work your way up, make sure all the scratches are uniform and you're good to go. Okay, so I finished uh, flattening the back of this chisel and putting on a secondary and then tertiary, I guess it's called the third bevel. Uh, it took me 36 minutes to do the back up to, I think 8,000 and then another 16 minutes to do the second and third bevel. I didn't redo their entire primary bevel. Uh, if you want, I only did up to a half inch on the back. Um, you know, that's kind of what I'd consider the minimum or slightly above the minimum. I use the scary sharp system for uh, the majority of my sharpening. And I use one of these, but I just want to comment on these in that if you have the money, uh, consider a Veritas one or one with a longer reference wheel. These have a real tendency to not only wobble a little bit, but the machining is not great in here. And I've noticed, uh, this is my second one, I've noticed that this one was not as good as my first and it actually cuts away, uh, sharpens away at a slight little angle. It's never been a problem for me when using them, uh, but if I had a bench grinder, I would probably redo this primary bevel. And if I had the money, I would get a better one of these. So yes, these are extremely cheap, uh, but it's very hit or miss with the quality. And these wheels have a tendency to get a little clogged too. So just make sure that it's continuing to move. Uh, my initial one, the reason I moved to the second one here was because the wheel got stuck. I didn't know and I essentially ground a flat surface in the thing uh, so that, you know, destroyed it. So again, 36 minutes for the back, 16 minutes for the secondary and tertiary bevel for one chisel. I don't think that's bad. Uh, it'll take a lot longer, obviously, if you want to do the entire back. Uh, but, you know, per chisel, you're looking at a little over two hours there for four chisels. Obviously, I didn't do them all at once. I only did the quarter inch and the half inch at first because those are what I really wanted to use. I did the three quarters later. Uh, I'd, I forget what it was, but I needed to do something with a larger one. And now I've just done the one inch. So you don't have to do them all at once if you want. You can use whatever sharpening system you have. Just make sure that you strop at the end unless you have something like the Scary Sharp, which goes up really, really high. Uh, Jonathan Katz Moses did an incredible video, probably the most thorough sharpening testing anyone will ever do. And it showed how important those super high grits, especially the strop, if you don't have something like the Scary Sharp are to getting it truly, truly sharp. Um, there are plenty of other people who don't strop, who use like 16,000 grit shaftons and stuff like that. But I thought his test was very convincing for why you should strop. So again, not too long in my opinion, but does take a while. So be prepared that when you're buying this kind of price of chisel, it's not gonna be machined as perfectly as a very high-end chisel that may cost, you know, $50 per chisel. All right, now that we've got the vegetables part of this video out of the way, let's get to the meat and potatoes. How do these cut? I'm just gonna use the half inch here on some white oak end grain. I think this is white oak, I don't think it's ash, but uh, we're just gonna see how they cut through. Now a lot of this is going to depend on your sharpening. There's only so much the chisel itself can do uh, if it's not really sharp. I'm not an expert. Uh, I don't pretend to be an expert. So I think this is kind of replicated off of what the average woodworker would be able to do without spending a ton of money and investing years and years into sharpening and things like that. There are a lot of great sharpening tutorials out there. So with whatever system you go with, there's definitely a tutorial, whether it's diamond stones, Shapton stones, scary sharp, you can absolutely find that and practice, hone your skills, because there is a significant difference in how they cut based on how sharp they are. It's just the simple fact of it all. You can have $300 chisels, and if they're not sharpened properly, they're gonna cut no better than a Home Depot chisel. All right, we've done the end grain of some white oak or ash or whatever that is, some very hardwood. So let's look at softwood now, which can sometimes be even harder to cleanly chisel through. So we'll see how this goes. 
Not too bad, actually. That's leaving a pretty nice surface. Sometimes it helps to go at an angle. Um, I don't know why, but much like planar blades at an angle, sometimes it cuts smoother than going straight on. All right, let's look now at the edge grain of the white oak. As you can see, even in very hardwoods, they are quite effective. All right, we'll now do the edge grain of a piece of pine. Oh, that's so satisfying. All right, now we'll do some softwood face grain. Now, if you're really careful, you can also use these for putting a, uh, a bevel around over, just breaking the edges. You have to put even pressure and go very slowly and carefully, but you can see it performs a, a good job at putting a little round over on things. Now, normally I just get the block plane or something out, but again, a very satisfying thing to do. Uh, but you can also go way too deep, way too quick if you're not careful. So just keep track of where you are and what your angle is if you do plan to do this. All right, I just wanted to give a bit of a real world example here, somewhere where I would use these. And a lot of times I cut tenons with the table saw and if I forget to put a 50 tooth blade in there or even with the 50 tooth, I usually have to do some cleanup to get these a little uh, more flush. The saw ridges you can see there from the alternating tooth bevel. So I just come through here and I hope you can see this. And just remove these very easily. You're just hitting the high spots. All right, and that looks pretty good to me. Got a little bit on the end here, but uh, to my finger, I can barely feel it. That's a real world example of where I uh, often use these chisels. And it's probably an odd one, and I'm sure most people won't do this, but I kind of like using chisels for pairing, so sometimes I find situations that are probably not needed and uh, use them. It's very calming, a little ASMR-esque. All right, let's just do the final thoughts here. At $60, these four Narex chisels, quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, and one inch, are absolutely worth it. They are beyond a good value. Um, these are, in my opinion, probably the most that the average woodworker will ever need in terms of chisel quality. I showed you what I generally do with them. The one thing I left out was chopping mortises because I don't chop mortises by hand. I've only done it one or two times and I didn't want the quality of my skill um, shining a bad light on these. These, I'm positive, will be good at chopping mortises. However, if you are buying chisels to chop a lot of mortises, buy some mortise chisels. They're purpose designed for doing mortises. Um, if you have a, a, a relative, a gift time coming up, these are an excellent gift for a woodworker who doesn't spend a lot on themselves and you want to buy a good value gift that they will absolutely use. One other thing I want to point out is that these are extremely sharp on the edges here where the point comes down, which of course is intentional because you want it to fit into as tight a space as possible. However, just be very careful that when you're pairing with these, that if you push forward too fast, you will slice your finger. I've done it multiple times. And what I'll say about chisels is that the experience you have with them is going to increase exponentially based on your sharpening. It kind of comes down to that at the end of the day. Now, these feel great and they're perfectly weighted and they sharpen easily, but if you are not sharpening well, you're gonna get less out of them. I learned that the hard way, and I ended up getting rid of my kind of mediocre stones and moving to the scary sharp for the main sharpening of my chisels, and it greatly improved the performance and how much I enjoyed using them. When it just kind of cuts right through nicely, it is so much more enjoyable. Now, another thing I wanna add about these is that they are not the hardest steel out there. So what that means is that you can sharpen relatively quickly, however, they will hold an edge for less time. So it's this kind of trade-off between how long between sharpenings and how hard it is to sharpen. There are different types of steel, and just in my experience with these, 
They hold an edge long enough for me. I'm able to get through any task without really having to resharpen it unless it's something very long. And uh, if I'm chopping into something really hard, okay, maybe I'll resharpen. Uh, and just be careful because when you get these really sharp, uh, they can cut you. I dropped one of them and instinctively reached for it and had to get about six stitches in my hand. Uh, and it went right into my hand. So just be very careful. They're very sharp which is good. As I said before, but you may have skipped around and missed it, I use one of these uh, sharpening guides. And what I will say is that these cheaper ones, they all look identical no matter who sells them. They're very hit and miss in quality. And there's a lot of play on this wheel, not just this way, but at an angle as well. And this can lead to kind of an angled sharpening on it, which mine do, unfortunately. It's never been a problem when I'm using them, uh, but if I have the money sometime, I'm going to get one of the nicer Veritas or other ones that have a longer uh, bar on it. Now, of course, the ideal world is hand sharpening and doing it very well, but I don't sharpen enough to really pick up the skill, and it doesn't take very long to use these. So yes, these are good in the sense that they will get you a sharp chisel, but the quality is very hit or miss on whether you will keep it at 90 degrees. So just be aware of that trade-off. Uh, these are about $15, which is a you know very seductive price, but there is a cost to performance ratio there, and these are low cost. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, anything like that, leave it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.